Hello and welcome to this very short introduction to Lux Render. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and if you've never used Lux before and you want to compare Lux to cycles using my Praying Mantis tutorial, then you will probably need to watch this. Okay, biggest difference between Lux Render and Blender Render is that Lux is an unbiased render, so it uh, supports mesh lights and caustics and uh, yeah, that's basically the biggest difference. Lux Render still supports sun skies, so if you have no, if you have no um, experience in uh, um, unbiased lighting, then I recommend you to use a sunlight and uh, just choose sun and sky, and uh, use that as a, a surrounding environment. There is one problem if you turn up the turbidity which should be just how many clouds there are in the sky and by that how soft the shadows are because turbidity of two is very harsh shadows they fix that problem it's awesome uh, it's awesome okay you can see now that um this is just a normal daylight situation the monkey gets rendered and uh, is casting a fairly harsh shadow okay this is the skylight Let's uh, continue having another look at, uh, I'll just delete this one. You can still use, there's a second one. Oh, that's, oh, that is where the second shadow came from. Okay. Um, yeah, the softer shadow came from the skylight that I created with the increased turbidity and the harsh shadow over here that came from the skylight that was still there, which I didn't catch. You can still use spot lamps and area lamps just the way you used to but I think the most the two most common lamps or three is skylight and mesh light and the last one I'll show you in a second in Lux, in Lux render with mesh lights you have to be careful because they only cast light in one direction and that is along the normals there's two ways of, sh of uh, trying which way the normals or actually there's three ways which way the normals of a face are pointing one is to enable GLSL shading or just to um, check textured solids. In this case, if you uh, put to solid, then um, your one dimension, your two dimensional objects which have no depth are only visible from uh, the direction into which the normals are pointing. So if I rotate this, you can see the plane gets transparent or n invisible, which means the normals are pointing into the wrong direction. There's a couple of other tests too. You can ch set this to normal, then the blue arrow will face into the direction of the normal. And lastly, and this is probably the most secure one, you can have the normals shown. If you press T, select, uh, sorry, N, and under display, so you select uh, face, then the normals of the faces are going to show. So this is the wrong way, so I'll flip this, flip normals, and now you can see the normals are pointing into the other direction, which is very important in Lux Render Lighting. Okay, now I can just position this and give it an emission material. By that you can just leave it to matte and select Lux Render Emission and then the gain and the power and the efficacy. I'm not sure what the efficacy does. I read it, but I didn't really understand. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, for the monkey there are several types of material you can choose from. They're fairly self-explanatory and many of them have tons of presets so you can just go nuts with those. Or if you want a more complex material just watch the Praying Mantis tutorial. Okay, if I was to render that now I would get a... Uh, let's just do that. I'll pause because it takes a while to initialize. Oh, by the way, where th while this is uh, rendering, if you have any trouble, Lux doesn't start because that happens a lot actually. Well, not a lot, but um, fairly often, that Lux just won't start, and it's kind of hard to determine why that is. And the easiest way is to go to Help and toggle the System Console, and then you will see what's happening in Lux. Right now, this is set to Verbose, I think. No, it's actually at default, so I'll set it to Quiet. This is the Log Verbosity. Uh, same thing. Okay, let's say we're very quiet. Still, it's uh, telling you every step it does, and this comes from 
the updating of this material. Okay, so um, you're actually, even if you, it used to be that you could just select a uh, an object that doesn't have a material, and you can make it shut up by that, but apparently that's no longer the case. So if Flux doesn't start, press F12 and you see some uh, changing in this uh, mud of numbers, this flood of numbers, then you can scroll up to that, something like that, and you see the error message. One of the most common ones, if Flux started before and now it doesn't, it's most likely to be uh, to have to do with uh, that there are no light sources in the scene. For example, if you hide your light sources with H, of course, in theory, they still get exported, but uh, Lux Render will still think there's no light in the scene. Why should I render this? Okay, this is what happens if you use a mesh light to light the monkey. It looks fairly nice, still, of course, a lot of grain, but that's because Lux Render takes a while to render without grain. Okay, that is um, that is uh, the almost the last one, and one method that is a little um, processor uh, consuming, but it gives you a very na natural light situation, is the HDR lighting. HDR lighting means that you can use an all-around image texture, which is a panoramic view. It has to be spherical; a cylinder won't do. And uh, everything that, that is white in here, or brighter, will act as a light source. There's two advantages to that. One is that you have a very evenly lit scene. And second, if you have a reflective material, the reflective material will then um, reflect the studio environment. These HDRI packs you can get if you, t if you um, Google for Lux Render HDRIs, you will get to one of these pages zbyg.divianart.com apparently has um, at least three of them. I uh, For another scene I use this one because it looks very natural. This is a great resource and as I said it only takes a little longer but other than that it makes, it makes the scene look a lot more natural. So how to use it is a little bit unintuitive but once you know how it works it's no problem. You can use a hemi light and then in, in the Hemilight material options, you can see HDR map. And these are some of the studio maps that I downloaded. And I'll just uh, take this one and make the monkey glossy. I'll just give it a shiny metal material. Shiny metal. Shiny metal. And press render again. And here you can see that uh, the studio lighting is actually being reflected in the monkey's head. So there's this lighting here, and you can see the streaks in the monkey's head. So, um, of course, in a perfect world, if you were to uh, use a blender object in a material, in, in a natural environment, you would go ahead and take an HDR surrounding image of this environment and use it as light source. Well, of course, that is hardly ever possible, but um, that's how the pros do it. Anyways, um, I think this is now enough basics in order to proceed with the Praying Mantis lighting tutorial, or material tutorial rather. And um, yeah, if you're interested in how I did those complex materials, then just click on the next video. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you later.